everybody. My name is Akshma Shavasa, and I hope that all of you are happy and healthy. My guest today is musician Dhruv, who is joining us all the way from the US and is very excited to talk about his upcoming album, Private Blizzard. Hello. Hi, Dhruv. How's it going? How are you? Very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm well. I got back it's from my tour. It's a very, very good morning over there, right? It's noisy. It's so noisy over here. There's so much construction going on around this, this like street. So if you can hear that, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's completely fine. I can't hear a thing. I thought construction noises were only an Indian thing, but I'm happy it's a global no. problem. <laughs> We're going to talk about your music. We have to talk about Private Blizzard and you have to tell us all about it. Your process of working, the music, the inspirations, everything that you can tell us. Yeah, I mean, this album is such a long time in the making. It's like two years in the making. I obviously released my like first mixtape project in 2022 at the start of 2022. And then after that, for a few months, I had no idea what I was doing. So I went to LA and just made really bad songs for a few months and really had an existential crisis in the middle of it. But eventually, somehow, I ended up in Nashville, which I've never been to. It's like, so it's definitely like the most American city I've ever been to. But I met a producer over there who was just very encouraging and really supportive. And kind of from working with him, this album ended up being what it was. And yeah, I mean, I, I, the writing process for it was I just spent a lot of time kind of over the last couple of years chipping away at it outside in coffee shops and stuff. And then just like refining it a lot and a lot. It wasn't as like, uh, it didn't come as easily as the first project where it was just kind of like a dump and then it came out. This one was more of like refining and working on it over a period of time. Do you think uh, as a musician, you've done better work this time? Do you think you're more proud of this one or was it the first one? I'm more proud of this one, for sure. A hundred percent. It's more, it's just way more, um, with the first one, when you make your first al album, nobody, nobody cares. Like, absolutely nobody cares, you know? So you make it in this, like, small, you make it with your friends and you're, like, recording on really bad mics and in your bedroom. And you're, you're just kind of like, okay, well, this is the best I can do right now. So with this album, I got a, a, a budget to make it. So I got lots of musicians, live musicians, and it was, like, a much bigger, more professional task. Okay, well, we're happy that you're proud of your work. A lot of people just dive straight into, you know, criticizing themselves. So we get the positivity coming from you. I really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, like you said, the first album, you just make it. And then the other thing that comes with your consecutive work is that there are fans and people actually look forward to your work. And when I went to your Instagram, a lot of fans were commenting that your music has helped them heal and has comfort in them when they needed it. Do you also derive comfort from your music when you are working on it? Yeah, that's a really good question. For me, Thank you. I need to write it to move on, I think. For me, writing is just the way that I make peace of things and make sense of things. And I find that when I really sit down and, and try and write a song, there's so I am like unpacking why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling. And when I listen back to them, it almost feels like sort of me telling myself the things that I need to hear. So yeah, definitely. That's that's the whole, for me, that's the whole appeal of, of writing music. I do it, I do it for myself. It's selfish, but I make music because I love making music and because I need to make music, not necessarily because it has to be put out. Obviously, I like putting it out and I enjoy being a professional musician, but at the core of it, it's, it's I do it for, for me. I don't think it's selfish. You do it for you, but... Does a part of you also feel responsible for making the same kind of music for your fans because now they, they have a connection with your music. They, they feel warmth and comfort. Do you feel like, oh my God, I need to make more music to cater to this audience that expects it from me? Yeah, there's definitely an element of that, of wanting to... I just feel so lucky to have people who even want to listen and, and care to listen that I always feel I want to put my best foot forward with anything, with music, with writing, with shows and all of that. At the same time, I also don't think that I would be doing a service to anybody who listens to my music if I just, you know, rushed it out and just got it out. Because I think they would be able to tell that it isn't necessarily the thing that I would want to make. And uh, I don't think good music is made from, like, thinking too hard about the other people who listen to it. I feel like any time in this process where I was like, oh, my God, like, will this song do well? Will it do badly? It just ended up being terrible. Like, I just was thinking way too much about it. Does it hurt? when a song doesn't do well is it heartbreaking or you move on well, i'll make another one i i it doesn't really hurt i um 
I just feel lucky to have had any success, right? Like my first project was so unprecedented for, for me and everybody around me because it was made again in this very small, like cozy environment with no thought about like where a music career was even going to happen. And so because of that whole thing, I feel lucky that I've, I've had some success. And obviously like I'm still aspiring to, to achieve, to be able to, to keep expanding the world of this and, and do things at a bigger scale. But like from the first song, it went viral two years after the fact, after I released it, right? I think that just makes me think that like eventually, like if the, if this, if the music is really good, it'll find the people, it'll find the right people. And uh, I like the idea of a slow burn. I don't, I'm not chasing a viral hit again i don't even know how the first one happened so I don't, I don't even think i would know how to make another one happen again yeah that would keep you motivated thinking okay one day like you said i'll find the audience uh circling back to private blizzard uh of course every album or song has a concept a theme or a topic it talks about what is the central theme of this album the central theme of this album is like your tw my, maybe your, your 20s are brutal can be brutal is the theme <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, the last, the last, yeah, they're pretty like, I, I've heard somebody say this on a podcast as well, but I feel like your 20s are like, people are like, you're supposed to be having so much fun, but then also like, you're supposed to be knowing what you're doing for the rest of your life. And like, you should be like successful, but also like, you should be having fun and all of these different things. And I find with my 20s, like that's, I was in this push and pull of like, I've, I've honestly been working for the last couple of years and traveling so much. And like, I don't think I've had as much necessarily as much fun as I would have liked to, you know, like being as young. So I think, um, oh, and also just like, you, 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 you kind of get your, like your real first taste of like different things, you know, like when friendships end, it's, it's like disillusioning in some ways. So I think that's like the, that's the overarching thing, but it's fun. The album is fun. It's not like a drag. It's not like, oh, I hate my life. It's just, it, it just explores some of those like not very pleasant things in a way that I think is fun and compelling. I think, I think, at least. Is it okay if I request you to sing a few lines of any song from this album? That's a few lines? Um, sure, let me think. Okay, yes. Do like a few from Tragedy, which is like... Trying not to think about it, but I always do. Playing out the scene in my head on an endless loop. Feeling like the main character, but in my own tragedy. Oh, oh. Awesome. Thank you. On that musical note, I would say thank you for your time, Dhruv. I know it's very, very early there, but you You're made fine, it. Don't worry. Awesome. I really enjoyed talking to you, you know. I really did. It was fun. It was nice to nice to meet you virtually. Your your setup looks really nice. This like beautiful couch. <laughs> like... Is it? Really? Thank you. It looks so much better on the HD camera because uh, the zoom frame isn't that nice, but the HD camera, it looks much more uh, proper. So thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh, I just felt like you were very candid and very honest and you weren't trying to, you know, uh, fake it for the camera. And I like that vibe. And I'm really looking forward to more music from you in the future. So keep writing music, keep singing songs. And I hope you keep entertaining us for many, many years to come. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yes, it was a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.